industrialized since 1996. Why would you want to go further? For example, why would you want to consider, as part of full membership, joining the Eurozone when you see from afar that the Eurozone is in a complete mess? I'm just wondering whether, in the end, Turks like yourself at the very top of government are scratching your heads and thinking, maybe our strategic plan of the last decade isn't quite right. Maybe Europe's time has been and gone and we do need, for economic as well as political reasons, to be looking eastward because the center of gravity in the world is shifting. You're right. You're right. I think it's, hard, it's becoming harder to make purely an economic case, but it's really not the economic case. Europe is about unity and diversity. I mean, that's, you know, the, the, the message. And I think for us, Europe represents something beyond pure trade, investments, tourists, etc. So it's about values? It's about values, and we want to meet well, our European friends. Let's on talk values, values then. Yes, All right, if we're talking values, not pure economics, how does it make sense for a country like Turkey, which has just uh, put its relationship with, for example, Israel on a completely new footing, that is a very sour footing, has decided to become a key player in efforts to change Israel's policy, not least on Gaza, talking to Hamas. How does that fit with your idea that you want to be very much part of EU values? Because the EU is nowhere near Turkey's position. Actually, a real friendship with Israel would require exactly what Turkey does. Because we all know well, because that's not what that the, the, policy, the, the policy that Israel right now is implementing against people in Gaza or in general Palestinian people, the collective punishment, you know, it's not in the long-term interest of Israel because it doesn't provide Israel with security and it doesn't provide the region with the type of uh, stability that is needed to achieve a degree of prosperity. But when you, uh, when you have a prime minister, as you do in Ankara, who accuses Israel of state terrorism, when you have protest marches in Turkey where some people wave placards of Adolf Hitler in their protests against Israel's actions, does that suggest that Turkey is really front and center when it comes to European values? No, no. We, we have no quarrel with people, with Israeli people. So let's, let's make a distinction there. But if a state of Israel is attacking a flotilla full of peace activists, activists uh, that have nothing on board other than drugs, food, etc., and killing some of them in international waters, what is this other than short of, you know, anything short of piracy or anything other than state terrorism? So you're determined to pursue this diplomatic confrontation with Israel are you? You haven't um, uh, sent your ambassador back. Diplomatic relations are frozen. You've demanded an apology for the death of the nine yes. Turkish nationals. How far is this dispute going to go? I mean, again, uh, Turkey has been a friend of Israel for a long period of time. We past, were the first, past tense. No, we, we were the first nation to recognize Israel. We still support an, a secure Israeli state but of course side by side with a Palestinian state. And we want these sufferings to end. We want our region to be prosperous, to be stable, so that we could all benefit from it. And I think that requires being tough when it is needed with, with, with players in the region. Well, interesting you say that too. Players in the region, you say we are required to be tough, to be stable. How does that fit with uh, Prime Minister Erdogan describing Mr. Ahmadinejad of Iran as, quote unquote, a friend, the Turkish government choosing to vote against the latest round of UN sanctions designed to pressure Iran to make concessions on its nuclear ambitions. How does that all fit together? Yeah, I, I think if you present it this way, it won't fit, but it does fit. Let me put it this way. Our Western friends wanted to bring Iran to the table to have some sort of agreement. A year ago, an agreement that was micromanaged by Brazil and Turkey was actually offered to Iranians. So we took this step. We had to stick to that because essentially we offered Iran that all the enriched uranium should be coming to Turkey and then the need, what they need should be supplied by the West. So actually this was a way out because in our region we don't want other wars, new wars. Look at what happened in Iraq. We want a more stable, peaceful, pro we want a uh, nuclear-free region. Sure, but I, I just wonder how it fits with Turkey's long-standing commitment, for example, to NATO. I mean, here you are, a full-fledged, proud NATO member who has voted against 
a raft of UN sanctions, who presumably, a, a country now determined to defy those sanctions, a country for whom the United States has expressed grave disappointment at your recent actions toward uh, Iran. We, so how does that we, make sense we of have your never traditional defied, alliances? We've never defied sanctions as first, so we're not going to do that. But more importantly, when you talk about NATO, Turkey has been a very reliable partner. Currently, we are the leader of the forces in Afghanistan. A, m a few times we assumed the leadership for the forces in Afghanistan. We were in Somalia together. We are in Lebanon right now. In many parts of the world where NATO uh, involvement was required, where Western involvement was required, Turkey has already been there, always been there, and very strongly. Is this so I think we need to look at it in a more balanced way. Is this really, and I'm quoting words here from uh, Mesut Oshchan, who's an academic at the Istanbul Bull Commerce University, is it really more about trade and economics than it is about anything else? Because he says what we've been discussing, the shift toward a, a more Middle Eastern oriented foreign policy taking on Israel, he says this is about markets and about security, creating an impression to benefit Turkish businessmen. And he's exactly. looking toward the exactly. Arab world and the Gulf, and new potential markets for Turkey. Is that let what it's me, about? Let me just explain to you. When we took the office um, in 2002, our total exports to Arab nations or, was only 1.8% of Arab nations' imports. Only 1.8%. Turkey is a big economy, significant player in the region. Within seven, eight years, we have more than doubled. It's now uh, about 3.9% of Arab nations' imports. But still, there is huge upside. There is nothing wrong with taking advantage of economic opportunities, investment opportunities with the countries in the region. We have a free trade agreement, of course, with many nations. We would love to sign one with, with the United States. We would love to sign one with any country that is willing. So clearly, it is about economic prosperity. It's about obviously having uh, Turkish companies, uh, you know, playing a role in the region. So there is nothing wrong with that. It's not about moving away from the West. But you see, the problem is perceptions in Washington suggest it might be. Robert Gates, the Defense Secretary, just the other day said he was extremely concerned that because you were getting no change out of Europe when it comes to the, the membership discussions, Turkey was being pushed eastward to look towards its Islamic and Middle Eastern friends, whether it be in the Arab Gulf or whether it be Tehran. That's the perception in Washington. You see, again, I I'd like to again note that our rediscovery of our neighborhood is not an alternative to our ambition well, why, do you, why do you think, as finance minister, who has a lot of international discussions, why do you think that so many people in the West are concerned about it when you keep because delivering that Because they're not used to, they're not used to Turkey uh, disagreeing. In the past... Not Turkey, used to Turkey standing up for itself. Exactly. In the past decades, Turkey always did exactly what it was told, what she was told. And that's not going to be the case anymore? No, we shouldn't be. Even within a family, there are disagreements. Within European Union, you don't always agree on every issue. We don't have to agree on all Sometimes, actually, challenging, because when you're, you know, because that could prevent our friends from committing further mistakes. But you, you do have to think carefully about how, who your new allies are and how reliable they are. If your new allies are President Ahmadinejad in Iran, the Russians, and there's a major push on economic and energy ties with Russia, and the Gulf states, you don't necessarily have the most reliable long-term strategic partners there. Let, let, let me put it this way. We still have strong links and aspirations for westward march. There's absolutely no question about it. European Union, accession to European Union, remains our number one foreign policy priority long-term objective because we see that being the best path for Turkey's own transformation. But Russia is a major economic you know, partner. It's the largest trading partner with Turkey. We get 2.5 million tourists from Russia. Russia is, is, is an emerging power. And so it only makes sense for us to have a better dialogue. Iran has been our neighbors for, for thousands of years. Our border with Iran has not changed since 1639. And that's a fact. We want all of our neighbors 
to be stable, democratic, and, 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 and prosperous, because we would benefit from it. And it goes without saying, as finance minister, you want Turkey to be stable as well. Of and democratic as well. But there are real issues about that too, aren't there? And before we We're finish... We're not perfect. Well, far from being perfect, you are riddled with scandal right now. There I'm is still the Agenicon scandal in which just the other day another colonel in the army was accused of trying to undermine the very uh, stability of the that's, government. That, that, that shows actually that finally Turkey is cleansing itself from past mistakes. Turkey, for the first time ever, has enhanced the standards of democracy. Everybody has to be accountable. If someone plots coups, they have to be challenged at the courts. With respect, though, it's not clear what direction Turkey is going to go in. The government wants a referendum in September on constitutional change. The courts are considering whether some of those changes that are being recommended, which include changing the nature of political control over the judiciary, are really in the best interests of the state. There is real confusion at the moment inside Turkey about Absolutely. where power should lie. Where po power should lie with people. That's how democracies are. The changes that we have made and hopefully people will get a chance to vote on it. Simple. Out of 27 EU nations, in 22 of them, all of the judges for the Constitutional Court are appointed either by Senate or by Parliament or President or Government. And in the other countries, it's mixed. In Turkey, only three of them will be appointed out of 17 by the Parliament, and the rest will be mixed, chosen by you know, courts, etc. When it comes to judges, the Supreme Whatever Council of Judges, actually they will still be elected by judges. Rather than a small minority of them, there will be a broad-based electorate. You so, you know, the changes are presented in a way as if really we're trying to get con not exactly the opposite. We want to narrow the gap with respect to European Union. If you look at what we have done and what we're doing, everything is about how to converge to European Union in every single sense. Well, Minister, before we end, and we must end soon, I feel you've been very frank with me. You've talked about the disillusion and disappointment with the EU process. You've also said Turkey will not be ordered around, pushed around anymore. So, 10 years from now, do you believe Turkey will be inside the EU club or not? Absolutely, I believe. I believe, I think European leadership will ultimately recognize the strategic value that Turkey offers, but also the economic value that Turkey offers. We're not going to be liability. We want to work together. We want to ease Europeans' concerns, ease European problems. Mehmet, we want to help. Mehmet Shimshek, thank you very much for being thank on you. Hard Talk. Thank you.